it's morning and evening. <laughs> and evening and morning. Actually, it's Spurgeon. <laughs> I uh, have enjoyed the time to record these because I even talked my wife into recording one video, I think, every Saturday, you know, to send just a little note, you know, to her kids, you know, to let them know that she loves them and she's thinking of them because when you have, as our modern society has evolved, long distance family units, sometimes you can't go to where you'd like to go or be there for your children. So sometimes you have to make use of technology, you know, to do that. And even as God, you know, reaches out to us and we use devotionals and we use Bible studies and we use lots of things to be in constant contact with him, even though he's God and we could, you know, just sense him and walk in the spirit. Those things help, you know, to remind us that not only is he real, but that we have a real connection. And so I enjoy, you know, having my wife share with her children, you know, her heart, you know, and sending them a video and letting them see that their mom is, you know, there for them. In Spurgeon, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost from Acts 2.4. Rich were the blessings of this day if all of us were filled. Sometimes I have to remember that I'm reading King James, or that I'm reading Spurgeon, because as soon as I start to read a sentence, it's like, wait a minute. If we're going to articulate, meaning that we're going to put the breath in the right place, we need to think twice before we read something that soundeth King Jameth. Rich were the blessings of this day if all of us were filled with the Holy Ghost. The consequences of this sacred filling of the soul, it would be impossible to overestimate. Life, comfort, light, purity, power, peace, and many other precious blessings are inseparable from the Spirit's benign presence. As sacred oil, he anoints the head of the believer, sets him apart to the priesthood of saints, and gives him grace to execute his office aright. As the only truly purifying water, he cleanses us from the power of sin and sanctifies us unto holiness, working in us to will and to do of the Lord's good pleasure. As the light, he manifested to us at first our lost estate, and now he reveals the Lord Jesus to us and in us and guides us in the way of righteousness. Enlightened by his pure celestial ray, we are no more darkness but light in the Lord. As fire, he both purges from us dross and sets our consecrated nature ablaze. He is the sacrificial flame by which we are enabled to offer our whole souls as a living sacrifice unto God. As heavenly dew, he removes our barrenness and fertilizes our lives. Oh, that he would drop from above upon us at this early hour. Such morning dew would be a sweet commencement for the day. As the dove, with wings of beautiful love, he broods over his church and over the souls of believers. And as a comforter, he dispels the cares and doubts which mar the peace of his beloved. He descends upon the chosen as upon the Lord in Jordan and bears witness to their sonship by working in them a filial spirit by which they cry, Abba, Father. As the wind, he brings the breath of life to men. Blowing where he listeth, he performs the quickening operations by which the spiritual creation is animated and sustained. Would to God that we might feel his presence this day and every day. Boy. <laughs> Spurgeon did not lack for being articulate when it came to poetry, much less the vernacular of his day and being able to flow with the words that he's so gifted in doing. You know, and it's funny because if you listen to someone over a long period of time, if they study the scriptures, like if, especially if they use, say, like a King James Bible or something, then even their very words, they seem to get a little lyrical and sing-songish kind of a limerick and an ability to communicate that their words themselves flow like water outward, you know, and it partially is from the Holy Spirit, you know, inspiring them with words to say and things to share. But at the same time, it's also amusing because it's partially to do with what we read, is that whatever we read or we take in with our eyes, it helps to program our mind and the way we think. And so, Sometimes, you know, there's a certain amount of truth to 
programming yourself in a certain way that you want to go. For instance, if you want to learn Spanish, you study Spanish and you read Spanish and then you listen to Spanish and you speak Spanish. And so that's what you do. You absorb yourself into the entire spectrum of learning Spanish. Or if it be French or German or any other language, Russian, Hebrew, I mean, you can name all the languages that are in the world, but in order to really understand it, not only do you have to read it, you have to hear it. And then just not just hear it, you have to see it being spoken as well as know it in its normal context. Did you know that that's what really God wants to do with you? He just wants you to see him, to hear him, to know him, to walk in context with him, to really understand him. It's the same way, just like a language. The best way to learn it is to live there. <laughs> and where do you live with God? In your Bible. You study it, you read it, you get to know him. Once you understand who God is, then if you get rid of all the misconceptions and all the misdirections and all the crazy things that we always think that we know about him and just read what he says and understand what we're reading, you'd be surprised how well a devotional, and like these videos that we make of the evotionals, be surprised how well they fit within your life as God begins to speak to you personally, individually, uniquely, the way he wants you to hear him, because he meets you right where you are today, just like Spurgeon, <laughs> just like Jesus, but wants to speak to you.